Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to provide a demonstration of the independent samples t-test using Stata. Now before we get started, let me note that underneath the video description, you'll find a link to the Stata data file that I'm working with, so you can download the data to follow along. Additionally, you'll find a link to a PowerPoint, and that PowerPoint contains more information than I'm going to be covering in the video, so be sure to download that. Uh, it actually contains two examples, whereas in this video presentation, I'm just going to be focusing in on uh, the first one. So our analysis is going to be based on data, survey responses from 404 individuals. And what we're going to be doing is testing whether there is a significant difference between individuals identifying as male or female on a measure of perceived social threat. So for our analysis, the independent variable is going to be gender identification, which is coded one for uh, identified as male, two for uh, female. And then our dependent variable is perceived threat. Okay, so here I've opened up Stata, and let's just take a quick look at the data set uh, just by going through Data Editor right here. Uh, this is our independent variable, uh, which is, uh, again, gender identification. Our dependent variable is this measure of perceived threat. So to run our analysis, what we're going to do is go up through uh, Statistics, Summaries, Tables, and Tests, and then we're going to go down to Classical Tests of Hypotheses. So you'll see under this you have the t-test, mean comparison test, uh, that's highlighted. So I'm going to click on that, and next we'll click on to sample using groups. For the group variable name, we're going to select gender identification, that's our independent variable, and then our dependent variable is going to be perceived threat. So I'm going to scroll down to that. Now I want to highlight that you do have the option if there is evidence of a violation of homogeneity of variance assumption, you have the option of performing Welch's t-test. So to do that you would click on unequal variances right here and then this box for Welch approximation would highlight and you would click on that. So I'm not going to do that um, in this uh, part of my demonstration, but I just wanted to show you that uh, that is available to you. So we're going to click on OK and we get our output. So walking you through the output, you'll, you'll see over here it says group and we've got uh, male and female. Uh, then we've got the uh, sample sizes for each of the two groups that are given. The sample means for the two groups. So you can see that individuals identifying as male, their mean on perceived uh, social threat is lower than that for uh, female. You can see we have our standard deviations that are given over here for each of the two groups. Uh, down here you can see difference. Uh, this is just simply taking the mean for group 1 and subtracting the mean for group 2. And then we have a 95% confidence interval for the difference in means as well. Right here you can see we have our T value that's given as well as the degrees of freedom. And then over here we have the P value that's given for our test. Now keep in mind we were just testing whether there's a significant difference between the two groups. So that implies a non-directional hypothesis which, uh, which requires essentially a two-tailed t-test. So this is our P value right here and so you can see that we would infer that there is a significant difference between the two groups. Now, if we want to request um, effect size measures, we can do that very easily as well. So we can go under statistics, go back essentially through the same route that we went through before, through our classical tests of hypotheses, and then go down to effect size based on mean comparison. So I'll click on that, and we'll stick with the two sample using groups. Our uh, group variable name, again, is gender identification, and then our dependent variable is our perceived threat variable. So we have various options that are available, and in the PowerPoint I talk about Cohen's D and uh, the point by serial correlation coefficient. So I'll go ahead and click on those right here. I do want to draw your attention to the fact that if you were uh, testing or carrying out the um, Welch's t-test because you had unequal variances, then you have option right here related to the effect size measures as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And you can see that we get Cohen's D. So this is our estimate right here, and this is the point by serial correlation. So when you are interpreting effect size, what you're doing is you're talking about the magnitude of the effect. So really, the, the direction of the effect in terms of being positive or negative 
is not really what you're uh, drawing your main focus to. It's really the absolute value of that effect. So the Cohen's D value that you see right here, the absolute value of that would be 0.32, roughly 0.328. And for the point by serial correlation, it would be roughly 0.161. So Cohen, uh, in his book, lays out uh, various uh, conventions or benchmarks for talking about the magnitude of effects. So the benchmarks for Cohen's D are 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and 0.8 for a small, medium, and large effect, respectively. When you're talking about uh, uh, correlation, the uh, benchmarks would be 0 0.1, 0 0.3, and 0.5 for small, medium, and large effects respectively. So you can see that um, using those benchmarks, um, we would uh, talk about our effect in this analysis as uh, being small. Okay, so now I do want to point out too that, you know, we just ran our analyses through menus. A lot of times folks want to just use syntax. Um, so you can see that when we ran our analysis, this is the, the syntax that would produce the same results for the our independent samples t-test. So you can see it's using the t-test uh, command right here, followed by the name of the dependent variable, followed by a comma, then by and then inside the parenthesis is the name of the grouping variable. So just uh, walking you through this, I'm going to use the command line right here. So we're going to type in t-test, then perceived underscore threat, comma, then by and then inside parenthesis the name of our independent variable which is gender ID and then hit enter and there we have our results. You can see for the effect size measures that we were requesting, you can see that we're using this E size command, then followed by to sample, uh, then the name of our dependent variable, comma, then you can see that we're using the by um, uh, option right here, the name of our independent variable, and then you can see over here we've got Cohen's D and then PB core for point by serial correlation. So essentially then, you know, if we were to type this in, I'm just going to actually just copy it and paste it into the command line and hit enter and you can see that that's run as well. So one of the nice things about SATA is, is, is that if you were trying to learn uh, about syntax, you can actually run some of these uh, analyses through the drop down menus and then you can get the code and study it and you can learn more about uh, how to use it in future uh, studies. Okay, so the next thing that I want to show you is uh, how you can obtain the independent samples t-test using that Welch uh, t-test uh, approach. So just re really quickly, I'm just going to show you what it looks like. We'll just go back down, we'll rerun the analysis as before, and we'll select unequal variances and Welch approximation right here, and we'll click on OK. And so now you can see, uh, looking at our output, you can see it says Welch's degrees of freedom down there. There's our T value again, and then there's our P value as before. So there's not really anything uh, that much different that's taking place, except that now in our command, uh, in our syntax, you can see right here, it's, it's now adding unequal followed by Welch. Um, so if we were typing this in, we would be typing in uh, the T test, name of the dependent variable as before, comma, use the by uh, option followed by uh, gender ID for uh, the name of our independent variable and then adding an unequal and then Welch and that would get us our Welch t-test results. One last thing that I want to highlight before I wrap up is how you can obtain um, Levine's test. So basically uh, you know one of the assumptions that we've been kind of talking about one of the main reasons why you would use the Welch t-test is if you have a violation of the assumption of homogeneity of variances. So you have to assess that and so one way that you can assess this is by using Levine's test. So this is a common approach to ass assessment. So the way that you can obtain Levine's test results uh, is to go through again statistics, summaries, tables, and tests again, classical tests of hypotheses, and then you can go all the way down here to robust equal variance tests. So when you click on it, uh, you'll just basically put the name of your independent variable, which is gender ID here, and the name of our dependent variable, which is perceived threat here. And when you click OK, you'll see that we get three separate test results. So this is the standard Levine's test right here. It's based on the mean. This is a Levine's test result, which is based on uh, median. And then this is basically using trimmed means right here. So you can think about uh, this original test right here. This is the least robust 
robust to a violation of normality and then these are designed to be more robust to a violation of normality. And so you can see the p-values that are given, all of these are uh, greater than the conventional 0.05 level. So that would basically tell us that we have um, non-significant difference in the variances between the groups, which would indicate to us that our assumption of homogeneity of variances has been met. Okay, so that uh, pretty well wraps up this uh, presentation, and I appreciate you watching. You guys have a great day.